not only do I admire this cat, he's a brother in Christ, but I also consider him, man, just a good friend, a close friend of mine. Guess who? Garrett Waddle doing what he did all last season, leading the way for this TCU defense. Dr. Williams, I'm hyped today in yeah. studio we got big time guests today hey bro Good i'm boy. talking when you talk about big my man got 36 inch arms <laughs> I, I love doing podcasts with you harper but i ain't gonna lie this, this is a big deal today come this on, is the yeah, one man. i'm excited about come on man we're we're so excited because man not only not only do i admire this cat um He's a brother in Christ, but I also consider him, uh, man, just a good friend, a close friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, Garrett Wallow with the Tennessee Titans, linebacker, yeah. is here with us today. <laughs> Bro, how you feeling? That you Were you coming straight from workout? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm straight from workout, so I think I'm... <laughs> I feel out of place right now because everybody has a jean jacket on and a button up, and I have a nice little tight Nike shirt on. But I, I skipped man. my workout this morning. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get it in later. But man, I feel I feel amazing, and man, I'm just I'm no special man. I'm a, I'm a normal human being. I just like when these guys get you know. I, I always let that be known. Um, obviously, me coming from a humble background, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm just excited to be on this podcast and, and chop it up and yeah. on there with two very great men. Come on. Ready to pick the vibes up. Come Thanks on. Hey, hey, pick the vibes up. G. Wallow, so real quick, um, our show's been going for, for really a couple of years now, but just tell them you played at TCU. Yeah. And then – the Houston Texans. Now you're with the now you're with the uh, Titans. Is that how it's go? Give give us just yeah. a real recap about your career. Yeah. So I played four years uh, at TCU. I was got a scholarship as a safety. Mm. My second year there, I uh, switched over to linebacker. So I started three years at linebacker and was a team captain there for two years. Mm. Then I was drafted by the Houston Texans in 2021 in the fifth round. Uh, I did three years there, and then at the end of this third year, the Tennessee Titans, Titans picked me up, so I finished my last three games with the Titans, and now and now I'm going on year four with the Titans. So that's kind of been my journey. Uh, I've dealt with a lot of different coaching staffs in my time yeah. playing in the NFL, so there's been a lot of change. I'm going on year four with my four different head coach, so that kind of speaks on. for that's itself, <laughs> which is fine. But, um, you know, it's it's been a good journey. Uh, when, when you look at back at it, like a lot of things have been tough. But a lot of things have been rewarding as well, so yeah. I'm Absolutely. definitely excited about that. What are what are one or two um, principles or one or two like pieces of advice yeah. you've picked up from some of these coaches, maybe other team captains that yeah. that you would say, hey man, these these couple of things are shaping me or starting to shape who I am right now. Yeah, man. Uh, I I want to say I have probably one of the best leaders in the locker room I've ever came across. His name was uh, Christian Kirksey. He played nine years. He was working for ten last year, but he ended up retiring last year. But man, he was probably one of the best leaders I've ever been around. Best men I've ever been around. Men of God. And he would man. He was he was like level ten. Like he was off the chain. And then uh, you know, he would always tell me like, just don't don't let your situation or don't let anybody else tell you like or limit you like to who you can be like man just all be, it's always about be, like belief in yourself and I was like and to see that from him mm. and just knowing like the success he had in his career was awesome but he was also just even a better dude off the field I think oh. that was like having people like him in my corner and then I have I've, I've had the chance to have many great veteran like players who have poured into me and uh, man, just seen seen a lot of good in me, and just wanted to keep giving back. One of uh, Kevin Perry Lewis, he was another guy. Um, man, just always just uplifted me, always just give me good advice of how the league kind of works and how the business side is, and don't let the business side affect like who you are on the field, and mm. just keep being true to yourself and, and to your beliefs. And I mean, I just think that was huge because you know you think about things that we deal with in our everyday lives. Like man, we face adversity every single day mm. in our situations and our jobs whatever it is, like, even as an athlete working out, like, man, I was battling with myself today like, as a perfectionist, right? So, man, just, it's just always coming back to that thing is, like, man, just having belief in yourself and confidence in yourself, no matter what the situation looks like. So, mm -hmm. so as you're building those relationships on these teams in the league and on the team, is there, like, a brotherhood <coughs> between other Christians? Like, do, do the Christian men know who the other Christian men are? And is, is there a connection there? Is there a brotherhood yeah. there? What's that look like? Right, so... I think, you know, when people get a false uh, perception when they think about guys in the NFL because they think all guys are working, at, like, apart and trying to make a team, which is true. There is guys who are competing with each other. But 
we all know and we all been through certain situations. So in that time of competition, we all lift each other up, mm. which is what people don't see. Mm. I, I might com be competing with the guy next to me, but I'm still going to give him like his flowers when he does something good. And he's going to yeah. do the same for me most most of the time. Mm. So it's not like a separation where you have Christian men over here and then you have men who, who maybe not be following God as much. No, it's like. Man, we all come together, and then you kind of accept people for, like, who they are. Um, and some men, you'll have great conversations, and, and God will be in those conversations, at the forefront of those conversations. And, uh, you know, just kind of like, man, I have my faith in God, so I'm not worried too much about the situation or what's going mm -hmm. on with my situation. But other men, man, you just got to meet them where they are. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. the main thing, just being real, meeting people where they are, and not trying to push them too much in an area where they're not comfortable with because then you don't get the true – genuine like character of who they yeah. are that's that's the that's difference cool. i call that the difference between <coughs> companions and comrades yeah so a companion really is kind of a ride or die that's mm -hmm. going to be an inner circle guy <coughs> but a comrade <coughs> may be somebody you don't have a lot in common with mm -hmm. but you're going to link up to defeat a common enemy that's yeah good. right so that's so good. you're on a team um or at least you're on a roster with 60 other dudes yeah and and to think that sixty cats are going to have everything in common right. is just I mean that that never happens. But the one thing yeah. you do have in common is we're coming together as this team yeah. Yeah. for this one goal. Yeah. Right. And yeah. we're going to be comrades. That's good. Yeah. Uh, until it's time not to be. Right. And this it's really the opposite of having things in common. I mean, I, I walked <laughs> in in the first day and grown men with kids of five, and I'm just like, whoa, like this is a whole new environment. Different it's not, world. Yeah, we're all different ages. Like oh, wow. I'm, I'm playing with guys 10 years older than me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, man, it's just it's crazy. What's yeah. been your favorite on the field moment? Best play, best oh, game? Oh, that's easy. Uh, <laughs> my rookie year, man, I remember I used to talk to my old teammates from uh, Traven Howard. He played in the league for a little while, and I was like, man, I can't wait to play on defense. He's like, trust me, the NFL is a long season. Your time's going to come. Because I was mostly special teams my rookie year. So I just remember COVID was happening mm. a lot during this time. And a lot of guys got sick. And then uh, it was only like three linebackers that were healthy or like four linebackers going to the game. And I'm like, perfect. I'm going to play the whole game, <laughs> which I was. Like, I was like, oh, I'm starting this game. And it was it was like, it was one of the best games I've, I've had in my NFL career. Like, before, like my first start, I had... 11 tackles, man, I was just, like, absolutely in my yeah. zone. And, like, most athletes will understand, like, man, when you get in this zone and, like, you just kind of get this feeling, like, you just kind of know, like, where the ball is going. You know, like, the game slows down. And, like, you get in the zone, like, you just know you're going to have a good day. Yeah. And I knew from the moment of that first play, I was like, all right, it's going to be one of those days. Is there a quarterback that you want to sack one day? Like, if you got to sack one guy next year, who do you want that guy to be? Oh, man. I mean, you would have to go for the best. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes. Come on. <laughs> but, <laughs> Come on. but that's just, like, the respect thing. Like, yeah. okay, yeah, that's, he, he's probably the, he's a, he's the best quarterback right now. At times, like, obviously, you know, playing with other teammates, too, whenever somebody, like, sacked Tom Brady, like, man, I just sacked Tom Brady on the sideline. Sure. I just laughing. So, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's <laughs> oh, funny yeah, when they do that. <laughs> Don't sack Dak Prescott. Come yeah, on. Yeah. I'm a Cowboys fan. Leave him alone. No. I, am, I, I am not a Cowboys <laughs> fan, bro. Take his head take, off. Take you hear me? <laughs> take his head off, bro. Oh, man. That's crazy. Hey, so one thing I wanted to ask you about, you talk about Mahomes, the Chiefs. <clears throat> so when, when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, they bring the Vince Lombardi trophy out, and they give yeah. it to the owner of the Chiefs. And the first thing he did, he said, man, I just want to give glory to God. And yeah. I don't know a lot about him, but I saw another interview with him where he said, hey, look, my identity is in Jesus Christ. That's what I yeah. want to do. Uh, that's the owner of the Chiefs. And I, I just feel like this year, more than ever before, and I know some of it's because every player's got their social media, so we get to hear more from individual players. But it seems like this last season there are a yeah. lot of players – talking about the Lord, talking gospel. I, I'm thinking about C.J. Stroud, yeah. Brock Purdy, Derek Carr, these yeah. guys going on TV right after game, giving God glory, yeah. and not just a quick nod to the Lord, but talk. Like I, I saw one interview with C.J. Stroud. He kept talking about the Lord, and the guy interviewed him finally said, hey, man, I, I, I respect your faith, but let's move on and talk football. Ask him yeah. a football question. C.J. Stroud went back and started talking about the Lord again. Yeah. Ha have you? <laughs> is there an increase in that? Is that just my perception? Have you seen more players kind of being bold to speak out about their faith? Yeah, I, I think uh, that started um, from my perception. It started with Demario Davis okay. and actually read his book, which was phenomenal, so if you get a chance, definitely read it. Yeah. Uh, but it, it came out, I think the first time I seen the video was Demario Davis doing it. 
Um, on Sunday, he was like, hey, you know, tomorrow we could talk football, but today I'm going to give all glory to God. This is the mm. Lord's Day because we play football on Sunday, right? Yeah. Every day I feel like you should live like that, but especially on Sundays. Um, so I just, I mean, that was that was beautiful. And, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. when he came out with that video, everybody was sending it to me. I was like, man, I like that. I love That's that. Good. So CJ started doing it. And especially, like, seeing CJ in the locker room, like, he wasn't just a guy who just – put out that show like he actually lived like that right yeah and you talk about like identity and i think like in the nfl locker room that's like a place where most men are lost in their identity mm -hmm. because they're tying their identity to their profession mm -hmm. so so it's huge like to really find out your identity is in christ because man that's what keeps you grounded yeah. especially in a cutthroat business to where you really don't know what your everyday looks like yeah. and i think a lot of people like see these things like okay this is a huge trend and guys are finally coming out and putting their faith out there, but in the NFL locker room, there's no secret. Mm. I mean, I like before games, especially like when right here when I got the Tennessee Titans, like 20 to 30 of us would huddle in the uh, showers and pray before the game. Come on, and that's what people don't see. You know what I'm saying? So you have these men of faith um, in the locker room all over the place, and just just even when I think about like before every game, like. You know, you have this whole group of guys, probably like 50 some guys in the locker room. We're all holding hands, praying on knees. Like, that's just the things people don't don't see. Yeah. And, and those prayers get really emotional before mm -hmm. the game. Like, you'll have somebody, like, say a nice prayer and, like, you know, like, because, you know, it's come from the heart. We're passionate about the game. We're, we're thankful for the moment that's God ha that God has given us. So, man, it's just beautiful moments that people don't see that miss out on that could really be powerful if it was filmed and put out there. Come sure. on, I want to see that. I want to see that speaking in tongues prayer in the NFL <laughs> locker room. That's what I want to well, see. Man, to have Get that emotion. Thirty young men, like you said, all trying to find their identity, all trying to figure out what does it mean to be this young man God's called me to be, to play in this league, and to have one another to lean on to pray with. Uh, that's powerful. Well, and what's yeah. what's interesting, G, and in what you share, Doctor Williams, what you just said. This is not germane to a NFL locker room. Right. Yeah. I mean, how many men out there, young men, middle-aged men, old yeah. men, oh, yeah. are still in a career, still in a profession where they're being defined by what they do instead of who they are? Yeah, yeah. still trying to figure out their identity in their 40s and their 50s. That's yeah. it. And I heard, I heard a, um, I don't know if I heard a professor say it or I read it, but um, they had said. Man, Jesus is far more interested in who we're becoming and less interested in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Like, yeah. like, like who who we are becoming in the process. Yeah. Right. So at at the end of the day, you know, Garrett Wallow, whether he's a seven year veteran, a ten year veteran, a twenty year veteran, yeah. whether he's won five Super Bowls, two Super Bowls, or no Super Bowls, mm. like his identity is, man, he's a man of God. Yeah. yeah. Like that's he's good. a child of God. He's rooted in Christ, right? Oh, and yeah. when we get away from that, that's when it starts to fall apart. And yeah. I think there are so many men today, they're they're so dissatisfied mm. in 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 where they are because they're dissatisfied in who they are. Yeah. They don't know, bro. Well, and yeah. if you define well. yourself by what you do and you're discontent in what you do, then then you feel discontent in your very identity. Yeah. But if you can define yourself by who you are in Christ, like you're saying, then you lose a game, you win a game, you like your job, you don't like your job, good day, bad day, yeah. that identity is not affected by the, the ever-changing circumstances, right? right. Like, if you're, you're a man of God, then no matter what team you're on, what you're playing, or as Harper saying, even after you retire, yeah. that identity is not affected by any of that. Right. Yeah. It, in fact, it just gives you a platform to live that out. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I remember seeing John Harbaugh after the Ravens won their playoff game, about to go to the yeah. AFC Championship game. He comes out, press conference, one of his biggest moments of his career. Yeah. Everybody there wants to talk about him. What a great coach he is. What a great game he yeah. coached, the victory. And the first thing he did, he goes, I want to quote some scripture. And I was watching it Saturday night late. They just watched the game. I was like, did he just say quote scripture? And I'm thinking maybe he'll hit up some John 3.16, right? <laughs> Hit him with you. He goes, First Chronicles 29. I was like, First Chronicles 29. I was looking at my Bible. I was like, what? What is First Chronicles 29.11, right? Yeah. And he starts quoting this verse uh, about how all glory and all victory belongs to the Lord. And, and in that moment of man's victory, when all the world's wanting to elevate you to, to see yourself in that lens and say, no. My whole life is to elevate Christ. What did John the Baptist say? I got to decrease. He's got to increase. And, and I love that example. And I don't know that coach, but, man, that moment really stood out to me. But it's like you're saying, Harp, that's not just 
for those who are on TV. Yeah. I'm watching him on TV, but my kids are watching me every day. Yeah. Right. Like you got people watching you because you're an athlete, but you also got people who just watch you in life. Yeah. Um, and, and we're called to be that example even to them, right? For sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then like one of my favorite thing, like scriptures or not scriptures, quotes I've ever heard was comparison is a thief of joy. Hmm. And when I thought about that, and you know, it was one of my guys on the team development teams uh, in in Texans that, that uh, read me that quote. And I just think about like, man, if you compare your situation to somebody else's, you'll never be happy. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. because there's always gonna be probably somebody in a in a situation where you want to be, mm. but man, you just never know what their situation looks like. You never know what their everyday looks like. They may be dealing with their own struggles. You know what I'm saying? So, mm. man, it's just important to really find your identity and rooted your and be rooted in your identity because our emotions change, mm. things change, situations in life happen all the time. But if we know yeah. who we are and whose we are, then we're gonna be good. Yeah, yeah I love. I I heard a guy say one time, everybody thinks the grass is greener on the other side. <laughs> <clears throat> the grass is greener where you water it the most. That's good. Yeah. That's where it's greener, right? That's good. Mm -hmm. And and man, what what we're talking about today, and again, I love having G on the show. Dr. Williams, I always, you know, love doing the show with you. Mm. Right. And and the reality is, and I love how G opened it with with listen, man, I'm not, I'm not anybody special. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He may get to play on television on Sunday, and he may have people asking for autographs and taking pictures. But at the end of the day, man, he has real struggles. He has real insecurities. He yeah. wrestles with real problems. Yeah. I mean, you're in a you're in a privileged position. You're a you're a professor mm. at a at a at a university at a seminary, mm. right? And and people are constantly looking to you. I mean, you have students. You 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 basically shape the future. Mm. Um, um, all of us have have varying platforms, varying influence, all the way down to um, you know, to somebody that's just um, trying to to lead themselves. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so the thing we're all wrestling with, and this is where this is where I think it gets to the heart of what we're talking about today, is that is that we profess to believe something, mm. and we want our life to line up with what we believe. That's so yeah. good. And and Eugene Peterson said that the that the most difficult thing for him, and think about Eugene Peterson, he's one of the most godliest mm -hmm. people, you know, when you ask others about him, that yeah. our generation has known. Yeah. Tremendous pastor, theologian, right? I oh, didn't yeah. necessarily agree with all of his theology, but great a godly author, man, writer, amazing, yeah. amazing dude, wrote the Message Bible. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, the hardest thing in my life is to get what I believe to line up with how I live. And he called it congruency, that yeah. he was always striving for congruency. That's so Dude, good. And that's I think right. that's the struggle for every one of us. Yeah, I yeah. want to practice what I preach. I want the, my beliefs to actually shape my behavior, right? And like you said, it, you know, I think about the, the husbands, the fathers watching this right now. You know, you're not going to be on TV like C.J. Stroud tomorrow. Uh, but you are going to be in front of your coworkers. You are going to yeah. be in front of your wife, your kids, That's you right. know, and, and your kids are watching you every day. I, I'll watch guys like you maybe once a week on Sundays. Yeah. Uh, but my kids, they watch me every day. And, and to yeah. have that line up and, and to have your belief and be, your behavior line up doesn't mean you're perfect. Yeah. Right. It, it just no. means you're, you're striving after the Lord consistently. Even when you fail, you see it as sin, you call yeah. it out. I mean, some of my, I think, best examples to my kids have come after I've sinned, after I've blown it. And yeah. I go back to them and repent and ask for forgiveness. Right. Yeah. Come on. Um, That's real. But that, you know, what does it take? What do you think it takes to kind of have that consistency in your life to say, I, I want to live for Christ. But, man, I got the world coming at me. I got all this stuff coming at me. How, how do we stay consistent in that walk? Yeah, I just think you find out the things that keep you balanced. Mm. Like for me, it's my family. Come so on. a lot of the time, I spend a lot of time with my family any chance I get during the off season mm. because I know they keep me balanced. Uh, just being around like my nieces and nephews, uh, my brother-in-law, like man, all of them, man, just they keep me grounded. Being around my wife and just seeing like, man, because I didn't really come from – you know, my fa my whole family, we used to be strong a little bit as we when I was younger, but we kind of like split out and kind of did our own things as I got older. So, man, when you just like see like the whole family getting together and everybody just having a good time and you can see like the younger kids are listening and watching what the older people are doing and they catching on like, you know, what I'm saying it's a beautiful thing to watch. And sometimes, man, like you bring up your kids, like your kids are watching even if they don't like even if you don't know. Yeah. And I just learned that from being around my nieces and nephews. So. 
I mean, I just find things that just keep me balanced. Like my family is a huge part. Mm. Uh, and then like another thing is like, man, just hanging out with, with a great group of guys, that helps me keep balance too because, That's good. I mean, we all have dreams and we all have aspirations. And sometimes when we don't feel like we're in the place that we need to be, we all get frustrated and mm. kind of give up on those dreams and aspirations sometimes. Yeah. Right. And then a lot of things is too, like Harv said, man, you, you look at things and you try to align it with how you feel, like you want your life to be and how your life is. But when you end up getting to those certain things that you want to have, you don't, you don't realize like it comes with a certain level of responsibility mm -hmm. and you have to go through certain things in order to appreciate that responsibility. Yeah. That's so so good. that's why like, man, it's just, it's all a process. Yeah, you can't yeah. rush anything. Yeah. That's and what, word. And, and Jonathan, what you said, congruency or consistency is not perfection. Yeah. yeah. So Luther, Martin Luther called it uh, the tentatio. Hmm. He said all of life is the tentatio, which, which is l tension, hmm. yeah. right? He said, and the tension is we know what is supposed to be or we know what should be, mm -hmm. but we live in the reality of what is. Yeah. 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 And we're striving for yeah. what should be. We're striving for what That's is supposed true. to be. But we still have to live in the reality of, yeah. of, of what is. And yeah. and a lot of life is how do you respond to that tension? That's good. Right. Man. And I want to highlight something G said, man, because I don't want men watching this to miss, bro. And and he and I joke about this. He he knows it's one of my my big things. Mm -hmm. Um lions don't run with hyenas. Yeah. Mm. Hyenas run with hyenas. Mm. Lions run with other lions. Yeah. Like if you want to get better, whether that's in football, whether it's in theology, whether it's in holiness, like if you want to grow in those things, yeah. you've got to surround yourself with people who are ahead of you. Oh, that's yeah. good, man. You got to surround yourself with people who are ahead of you and 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 there's a lot of cats um you know they're a lion that that runs with hyenas because it makes them feel big, yeah. it makes them feel good, right? They get yeah. to, they get to lead the pack, but there's no growth there. Yeah, like like there's no growth. You're not being yeah. challenged. No. You're not being held accountable. That's what you call man. Just think about that. Um, you know, somebody's always told me if you're the smartest guy in the room, you need to go into a different room. That's Come that's what that is bro, right that's there. That's a word. That's a good word. <laughs> that's a word, bro. That's real. And what yeah. you're talking about is actually having. Yeah, community around you, actually having godly people around you. And I think, you know, we, we talked about the research that said 76% of adult men say that they don't have a good friend. No. They don't have someone they can lean on. Uh, but what a blessing when instead of isolating ourselves, instead of trying to run alone or run with people that don't challenge us, you have your wife, you have your kids, you have nieces and nephews, you have uh, your brothers, right? Yeah. You have a community of people that sharpen you, that challenge you. Yeah. I, I think that is the main thing we need if we're going to have that consistency in our life. Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't mean and again I just want to clarify this cuz people be sending us emails sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean that that's all you hang out with. So so yeah. I, I really do look at all of my relationships. You all know this, I've shared this before like every year I do a relationship inventory. Mm. Like I I filter and think about the people that are in my life speaking into my life shaping my life none of us are in neutral yeah and there are people who i enjoy hanging out with yeah but i don't grow when i'm with them mm -hmm. right they are for a good time yeah yeah and it's nothing wrong with hanging out with them i mean we're not doing anything bad right. or illegal or anything but yeah. but we go out to have a good time there's not a lot of growth you know i'm trying to influence them more than i'm letting them influence me oh, yeah. uh, but i hang out with those cats yeah what I don't do is spend the majority of my time with those cats. Mm. Yeah. Then there are also those people in my life who, who I don't necessarily like hanging out with, but when I'm around them, I grow. Yeah. So I force myself to be around them. I yeah. die to myself and say, man, I can't stand the sound of this cat's <laughs> voice, yeah. but I'm going to listen. I don't want to yeah. be with them, but I need to be yeah. with them. But I need to be yeah. with them, right? And then, and it's interesting, though. Typically, those people, over time, I start to enjoy being with them <laughs> more right. and more, right? But then there's those category of cats, bro, that, man, you love being around them, mm -hmm. but then you grow when you're with them. Yeah. Right? That's real. I think of you like that. I think of you like that. I think mm -hmm. of Delario like that. Like, I can list people that, man, I love being around. Like, when they call, yeah. I can't wait to, to, to answer. Or when they text, I can't yeah. wait to text back because I know, man, A, I'm going to have a good time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but more so, man, at the end of it, I'm going to be a better dude. It does yeah. sharpen you, right? It does sharpen me. And everybody watching, like, you should be categorizing your relationships. Oh, I had a youth pastor say it this way. 
and it's always stuck with me, he goes, you need a Paul in your life, that mentor, yeah. that person discipling Come you, on. pouring into you, sharpening you, even if you don't love hanging out, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're what you need. But you need that Barnabas in your life, too, that guy that's, you're running the race together, that brotherhood that you're praying together in the locker room before the game. They're yeah. calling you to encourage you, right? Uh, but then you also need that Timothy, the, the guys, and maybe they aren't spir- spiritually mature. Maybe yeah. even guys in your life that aren't believers, right? Yeah. But you're loving on them, you're investing in them, you're hanging out with them, you're building that relationship, and, and you're that mentor to them. You're That's that right. one pointing them to Christ. And if we have all three of those relationships, I think that's when we get to strive or thrive in all the different things God's called us yeah. to be. And Yeah, especially like, man, being on the field, man, there's no better, I guess, like feeling when you have a teammate that you can call a brother that when things are going wrong in the field, which yeah. happens all the time, yeah. we just cover it up, or right, there to lift you up and like kind of mm-hmm. lift you up in those moments, obviously. And then, you know, you think about that in your walk of life, like there's no better relationship to have like a good brother helping you along the way because one, they're a man and they know what you're going through. Mm. And then two, they can help hold you accountable and you can do the same vice versa to them. I love that. And they understand you in ways that sometimes maybe a woman doesn't. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, man, it's always good to have just run with a good group of lions. Uh, well, it's like you're talking yeah. about in the field. Everybody's got <laughs> different position, but you need every position, right? Yeah, yeah. You need the lineman. You need the quarterback. You need the tight end. You need yeah. the linebackers. We, yeah. Man, we need those linebackers, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and so you need all these various people in your life, uh, for, especially for those hard times. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's some dude watching right now about to send a text to a guy saying, bro, you a hyena. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe they're the hyena. Yeah, oh, yeah. Some, yeah, some yeah. Oh. Somebody's about to get a text. Yeah, somebody's watching <laughs> right now. They're like, I think I'm the hyena. No, I got, a, I got a good one for you. So I tried to explain to my wife what a lion and a hyena was. So yeah. every time we, you know, we're, I have a conversation with her, she asked me, is he a lion? <laughs> I was like, I got, sometimes I feel bad. But like, well, he's a sometimes lion. But he's not really. <laughs> I tried not to tear him down. I said, I said but there's sometimes. He might be a leopard. I said, nah, baby. He's a, he a straight up hyena. <laughs> <laughs> that that you know. that's her like code you know. word now. And then sometimes yeah. she like I've explained it well enough where she walks in and she's like, "Yep, he's a lion." <laughs> I don't have to say anything. I was like, "Yeah, he's a lion." That, that's your <laughs> that's your cell phone. It's yeah. like Chris Harper, lion. lion. Right. Yeah, Jonathan Williams, hyena. <laughs> yeah, come on, no, that's amazing. No, that's man. funny. She's yeah. using that as code now to figure oh, out man, yeah. where these guys are. Every conversation I have with another man, I say, "Hey, is he a lion?" You, you gotta throw it back yeah. on her next yeah. time she gets off the phone with some yeah. friend of hers, some girl say. Lion or hyena? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> who, who you spend yeah. your time on the phone with? Who are Man. you invested in? So, so community, community is so important. Yeah. Right, yeah. but but community more times than not will reinforce that identity. Yeah, right? That's good. And help shape that identity, man. So so we can we can laugh and we can joke and we have a good time, which we do. But but for for our viewers, man, that's that's real. Yeah. Your community is often going to shape your identity, and yeah. your identity is oftentimes going to fuel your account. Your, your community. Just be mindful of that. We're actually going to be back next week with G on the show because we're going to talk about work-life balance. Love and it. And is there such a thing? Oh, so yeah. you ain't going to miss that, man. I'll see y'all next time. Right. Be crazy. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Hart.